We're going to get started uh, with this evening's workshop. Uh, let me just review the agenda real quickly. Um, uh, starting immediately, uh, what we uh, planned to do was to solicit input. Um, it's the responsibility of the school board uh, to hire the superintendent of schools, and that is a process that we'll be engaged in um, over the course of the next several months. Uh, the purpose of our initial, the initial part of our workshop has been reserved to uh, receive public input into that search uh, in any way that anyone would like to provide input, uh, pro provided it's um, uh, fairly straightforward and uh, not exceeding five minutes or so, I guess, w is what we would probably uh, put as the um, uh, the parameters around that. Um, after that, whenever we've uh, we have sufficient input, or until 7:30, whichever comes first, uh, we would then move into um, the purpose of our. Uh, the original purpose of our workshop, which which is to discuss technology in the school system, um, also a very interesting topic, and one that likely will have budgetary implications as we move into the budget cycle. Um, lastly, also a uh, special meeting has been posted of the school board uh, to discuss a legal matter, and that will be in executive session, and that will be um, at the very end of the rest of our business. So um, I would like to st start the workshop, and um, uh, uh, Beth Currier is the chair of the superintendent search, and uh, perhaps she could kind of give us a bit of an overview of where we are um, uh, a bit of the timeline and the process that's being used, and then we'll o uh, open the floor and um, and invite comments and uh, and recommendations from folks. Great, thank you. Hopefully, everyone picked up a timeline, which should be the top sheet, and then the second sheet is a form that sort of gives you some attributes or qualifications of superintendents, and I'll go over those in a sec as we. Um, look at the superintendent search timeline and process. We have done this twice in four years, does that sound right? Twice in four years plus an interim, quick interim search in the middle. So as we were working out the timeline and process, we felt that the last time we did it was probably our best shot and this um, timeline is modeled quite closely on that one. The major change is that we really pushed all the dates ahead um, about 30 days. The first time we did a search, it was, I think, February 28th, the last day of February deadline. The next time it was the last day of January. This time we're pushing it to the last day of December. Um, we had a workshop with um, Ron Barker from MSMA, and he spent a couple of hours with us one evening going over the process in terms of a general overview and what we needed to do legally. He also presented us with a whole packet of really forms that we needed, one of which was these. Um, and the first job we had was to come up with the timeline. And as you see it in front of you, um, dates are still subject to change, especially as you get into February and March, where we don't know exactly how our applicant pool will sort of spread out and how that will look. Um, the things we do know at this point are exactly when the ads are running. They have been placed, and the first set of ads ran this past Sunday. The next set will be on two consecutive Sundays in December. We're sort of skipping the Thanksgiving week in there. Um, the places that you will see ads, there was much discussion by this group on that, are all of the main Sunday papers, the big ones, plus um, a New Hampshire paper to sort of hit that market. We did not do um, the Boston Globe, which we did do the last time, but not the time before. But we did do administrate. what's it called, Ed Weekly. Education Weekly. Weekly, which sort of hits the whole country in terms of superintendents. We'll also be posting it on the internet and using MSMA sort of their sort of search ability to put it in all their newsletters and those kind of things. Um, the decision not to put it in the Boston Globe was one we discussed. Um, it's very expensive and the candidates you get are really no different than the candidates we get through the other um, avenues. 
So that's well underway. Um, we've had one meeting to allow teachers to give us some input on qualifications, and then this is our second one to let community give us some input. From here, we'll take that input and we'll put together some criteria or attributes we are specifically looking for, and we'll do that in December. That's before we review the applications. The applications are available now, and um, Mary Bruns will be getting the calls to say, please send me an application packet, and then they would all be due back December 31st, whereas the school board will then sit down with the list of criteria we've come up with and choose a set of I don't know if I should call them semi-finalists or we'll call them sort of the first round of applicants. And we hope to get 8 to 12 candidates that we are interested in from that pool. From there is then we sort of open it up to a screening committee. So the school board does that first piece. Then it's opened up to a screening committee that would have the full board on it plus community members and teacher representatives. We're hoping for two to three teachers and two community members and our three principals um, to be on that screening committee. That group will see the application of those eight to twelve uh, semi-finalists, we'll call them, and they will be there to develop the questions for the interview. They will be there for all the interviews, asking questions. We might not have a question for every person in the room because actually it's quite a big group, but everybody will be there um, for those questions. Each candidate gets the same questions. Then that screening committee will give us their input on who they think we should pursue further. The board ultimately makes that decision of who we then call our next round finalists. I'm not going to say they're finalists because there may be another round in there. Um, the reason that is is the board has the responsibility of checking all the references and those kind of things. So they may have some further information that the screening committee does not have access to. Um, once that next group is narrowed down, which we're hoping is about February 1st, we will then decide if we are going to go visit their sites or if we bring them back here for another round before we go visit sites. Um, the interesting part of site visits is you, if you choose to do them, you need to do them for all your candidates. And it can be just an issue of how far away everybody is and those kind of things. So if you had four you were still real interested in, doing four full site visits might be a little overburdensome. So at that point we might decide we're going to narrow some more before we go and do site visits. Then we will get to the point where we will bring back our finalists, these would really be finalists, and have a whole day at the school. And we did this last time and you know it's a grueling day for the poor candidates. They go from building to building, they meet with students and teachers and administrators and everybody and go through. They have a second interview with the board and then they had sort of a more informal time with the board over dinner, but it is a grueling process. Our hope is, but you know, we've got a February vacation in there and February is a short month and snow days. Our hope is that by the March 9th school board meeting we would have some kind of announcement. I guess to put a little reality check on things, um, the candidate pools have not been great. Um, you know, that was sort of the words of wisdom from Ron Barker. Um, Hopefully, as Cape Elizabeth, we will be able to attract some great candidates and we won't have a problem, but in general, most districts are having problems attracting superintendents. And the average uh, length of stay for a superintendent is only 18 months. Did he give any reasons for that? Yeah. You know, he didn't really give us any specific reasons. I think there's some guesses of why that kind of thing happens. It's a tough job. It's a really hard job, and it's a full year job, and um, a lot of people are saying it's not worth it. Um, but I don't know specifically. Maine Leadership Consortium is putting together a group to study um, that very question, not yeah. just superintendents, but administrators in general, and uh, Connie Goldman is going to be active great. in that. So. It's, it's not our problem alone, it's a greater problem, and I don't even think it's um, unique to Maine. I it's think a it's, national problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think there was a uh, statistic that was in Maine, at least over the last couple of years, that nearly a third of the superintendencies open in the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
just a reality check to say, you know, this is where we are. And then just a little reminder that last time we did this, we felt we did a good job, we got good candidates, um, and then candidates that we were interested ultimately weren't interested in us. Um, they were offered jobs and chose not to take them for personal varied reasons. Um, we did send a follow-up survey to all of those people. They chose not to fill them out. That's, you know, it's hard to know why. But anyway, we, you know, it just happens. So that's sort of a little reality check on the whole process. Um, but we are very optimistic. But at any point, the timeline might change. As Ron Barker said, if it December 31st comes around and you don't have an applicant pool you're happy with, start advertising the next week again. Keep those applicants you have, go through them, but really, you know, you can change at any moment if the pool isn't what you were hoping for. Um, did we do that direct mail too? Yes, oh sorry, I forgot that. We did also do a direct mail piece. Um, it maybe went out today. Went out today. Went out today. Um, an announcement letter to every superintendent and assistant superintendent in Maine announcing this job. We got the mailing labels from MSMA. So it's sort of making it a little more personal. There was a, a rumor, and we're not sure where it came from, that last time some good candidates felt like Cape Elizabeth wasn't interested in a Maine candidate. And we're hoping to dispel that rumor or whatever by really doing a direct mail piece to all of those individuals. So that's sort of the process or a little bit of an overview. Um, before we get into the attributes and qualifications, which is the focus of this meeting, I want to um, encourage any community members that are interested in being on the screening committee to send a letter of interest to the search committee care of the superintendent's office. We will want to get those people in place probably by the time um, the Christmas vacation happens. You know, it can go as far as December 31st, but we really would like to get that set so that when January comes, we're right there. It is a heavy time commitment, especially that January 20th to 29th. Um, every person needs to be present for every interview. Otherwise, you have no way to compare the candidates. Um, our hope is that those interviews would be sort of at the end of the day, but maybe four, five, six, seven, those sort of hours. Um, it allows our administrators to be there and the teachers. Um, so that's sort of a, a general time frame. You'd really need to leave those afternoons open. Um, and then as we were scheduling those people, we'd have a much more specific schedule, but that would be the, um, the time. And um, we've also asked all the teachers to apply, to be on it, who are interested. So that's sort of an overview of the process. And um, maybe I should say, if there are any questions on the process or that piece, why don't we do those now? And then I'll sort of explain this. Yeah, Patsy? I'm wondering whether that screening committee will be involved in any of the later stages of the process. Um, the second interview. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess we're unsure. <coughs> the site visit team, we're told, needs to be the same site visit team that goes to every site. You sort of have to have a consistent process. And let's say we have a candidate in Ohio and one in Massachusetts. Certainly it's easier to bring people if you're driving somewhere in Massachusetts. But if we have to fly people places, it will probably be not the community members that would be part of the team that was selected to fly, just trying to be conscious of costs and those kind of things. Um, as for the second and final interviews, I mean, I'm open. I, I would think they'd be certainly part of the all-day process and things. The second interview with the board, I don't know. We haven't quite nailed those down. Um, you must have that confidentiality. Yeah, the confidentiality. <coughs> um, so I'm not sure. But the major focus of that screening group would be to choose the um, from the eight to twelve semi-finalists, I don't think that's, but maybe they're quarter-finalists, to the, to the group we really look hard at. So. I think it'd be, it would certainly be our intent to, once we get that group together, to keep them as involved as is possible all the, all the way through the, the process uh, until costs somehow 
prohibit that. Or confidentiality. Because um, when we start talking about all the <clears throat> reference checking and things we're hearing and getting to, yeah, but still community members can't have access to that information for whatever reason. And also to the extent that they want to stay involved. As, as Beth said, and um, having gone through it, I can't emphasize enough how, how uh, much of a time commitment it is. It, it is an incredible time commitment. Um, very worthwhile, but, um, but it's, very, it's a very draining experience to go through. It's very Certainly demanding. the all day visits when they're finalists and therefore they're walking through the schools and all. We would, I'm sure, want the screening people to help host them. What we do is try to have a host person take them around and sort of, you know, bring them place to place and those kind of things, which is, again, very time consuming, I'm trying to fill a whole day of people doing that. So I'm sure at that point, it might be that little middle point where we're doing heavy reference checking and site visits that um, it would be pretty much the board's purview again. Yeah. When I went to the meeting with the um, representative from the, the MSPA, yeah. um, he did his thing. I thought what I heard from the board was that you would allow the community to be part of the process until you were down to like four or five candidates, and then after that, you were going to cut it. I mean, that's what I heard. Is that correct? Well, that's pretty much, I guess, what I'm trying to say. You don't know how many you're going to cut down to from the 8 to 12. Um, if we really feel like there are four or five we really want to pursue, we may do an intermediate step in there so that we don't have to do site visits mm -hmm. to five places. But if we immediately go from eight to 12 to three finalists, then it sort of skips a step in there. We'd go right to the site visits and a final interview. Um, so we're going to keep that group involved as long as it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the first time through this, we went from our 8 to 12 to only two that we were interested in. I mean, you know, so it sort of depends on the candidate pool. I'm, I'm a little distressed that um, you're not advertising in the globe. If there's such a problem with qualified candidates, and if someone from another part of the country is looking to come to New England, and they go to their library, mm -hmm. you know, what was the not in the library in most yeah, but they'll they get, get it through Ed Week, it. or there are two national publications, that, uh, education publications that open. And so up. we're looking for an educator. We're not going to open. You have to be certifiable in Maine. Certified. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to be eligible for a, a superintendent certificate in Maine, you have to have a minimum of it's either three or five years experience as in education. As I think it's three years as a teacher. Okay and five in education. I, I don't remember. I could get it out so and look it up, but you for. cannot have just someone who's had business experience. So we're assuming that those folks will look in education. We it's, it's like a, it's almost like a, um, a magazine. It's like the book review of the New York Times. It's something you keep around. It's, it's like a nice publication. And anybody looking, that's where people look. Um, and Deb, part of the reason was the Globe for one Sunday was too grand. For a tiny ad. So that was sort of... <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't want to so be, you know... Worth the money. If, if, it was, if we felt look, that we would get good candidates from it, we would have done it in two minutes. But we felt that the only reason... We didn't get any candidates from it, and Ron Barker backed this up. You won't get any candidates that are different from the ones you'd get otherwise. The Education Weekly that you're going in this year. Did you we did it last time, you too. You did it last yeah. year. And you didn't trace where your candidates came from? Well, I might have asked them at the time, but right now I've forgotten. Um, you know, we certainly had someone from as far away as Montana and things. I assume he got it out of Ed Week, but I could be wrong. If they're really interested, they're going into the Portland paper on the internet or they're 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 checking the area. So, so theoretically our pool isn't gonna be any greater this time around than last time unless it's just a, a matter of circumstances and timing. We haven't even brought into this sort of the only way we've really changed the um, advertising is probably the direct mail piece to every superintendent and assistant superintendent in Maine. The other the other thing that we've done is we have Move the whole time frame forward. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the concerns was um, that we ended up 
vying for these sort of top candidates at the same time that they were being given counter offers by either their own school districts or being offered positions by other districts. Okay. So we're trying to we're trying to also get a jump start. This There's the, that's sort of what it looks like. And, and the, and the, the, uh, the back section, although on this was a September issue, the back section is thinner because things haven't started out, but they, they always have the section called. They have a called. big splashy ad. So they have, they have uh, Well, what do we do, three yeah. column by five inch? I believe that's what it was. But one of the things that we decided at our last meeting was that we would do several ads in yeah. this Education Weekly in place of doing the Boston ad. And I don't remember who it was, but someone did say at our last meeting that the candidates from the last search came from this yeah. publication because yeah. that was that was part of our whole yeah. discussion. I guess yeah, go ahead. This comes out every week and it will yes. be in this week's next week. It was um, November fifteenth and December. We're skipping sort of the Thanksgiving week. Um, we just sort of thought if it went out in the November 15th, if they were taking reading along for Thanksgiving vacation, then they'd bring the week befores. But the one that came out the Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, they wouldn't be, I, you know, we just were sort of playing the odds of what was better. And then we went to December 6th, the Sunday, which is the weekend after Thanksgiving, thinking, I don't know, you know, well, you think these things through too much and you can. You know. This particular publication comes out on Wednesdays, and it will be the first Wednesday in December. And then they get it like two days later right. in the mail. Right. So everybody gets in the mail. So anyway, um, certainly it's something we did spend lots of time thinking about and trying to figure out how to draw the best pool of candidates. Um, Ron Barker's trying to help us by really talking up the job and really, you know, saying this would be a great place for someone to go. You know, it's also a salary issue. Um, what do we put in the ads and what's a reasonable salary and what makes someone leave? And we have to be realistic that in the Connecticut area, superintendents are making 110000 well, we put in our ads a salary in the 80s with a, what do we say, a competitive fringe benefits or right. attractive fringe whatever, which gives us a little negotiating room. And um, that's on the high side in Maine. It's very much on the high side in Maine. We had a spreadsheet that Pauline got us that gave sort of the, yeah, you've got it, great, that sort of gave you an idea of what's good. I mean, 80s is good. Is it good enough to get some of our best superintendents in Maine to leave where they are and come here? We're not sure, but we're hoping it's attractive enough. Jen, what's the sort of, the, Portland's the, South, the highest. South Portland, I don't have, Portland's not on here. Well, they're the highest. South Portland then. is 85.5. Um, Yarmouth is almost 82, and Falmouth is 80, and we're 80. We're 80, so anyway. Do we have room to go higher? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, we got to leave 80s, our, 80s, 80s. We left ourselves some room, and you know, we always can talk about, well, <clears throat> another week of vacation, you know, those kind of things. So you don't want to lose a candidate over a couple thousand dollars. So. You know, but is it enough to really get someone to leave a job is, is the tough question. So, yeah. Um, obviously, that you mentioned, Mary, that they were going to do a study on what some of the issues were facing superintendents. Mm -hmm. Do you, and there are, people have some guesses, are any of them issues that can be addressed beforehand to make the position more attractive? I mean, are there tangible things? Are there not no, they're pretty much out of our control. There's some issues with the main retirement system, and I don't totally understand them, but I talked to Jane Amaro at some point about them, that it's hard for people from out of state to transfer any retirement benefits to here, which can be an issue with older candidates. So that's one issue, and I'm not exactly sure of the details of it, and I don't know, Mary, if you know any more, but there's some issue why. with transferring retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. The other problem is the certification issues, which are required by law in Maine, what it takes to be certified. And until some of those are changed or loosened to um, maybe attract people that haven't always been in education, that might address it. Those are no things that we're going to change in any quick near future. 
And some of those some of those requirements have already changed, as I as I went through them more recently, and I think we just had the the uh, most updated uh, requirements. You could almost stretch anything to fit, except for one piece, which was a um, an approved one year internship um, in superintendent administration or whatever. I mean, it was very specific. So, so um, that one piece, the other pieces you could conceivably substitute business or, you know, public, uh, public sector experience or whatever it might be. Um, that one piece you certainly can't. And I, my understanding also is that the feeder system in terms of there's just not as many people who are pursuing those, those qualifications in general. Um, or pursuing that as a profession. The graduate schools is another place we could have hit really heavy, but Cape Elizabeth isn't really a great place for a starting out superintendent. We really need someone who's had some experience, especially in a lot of legal stuff. Um, it is still going to be in all the announcements that MSMA sends out, and they do hit the graduate schools, but that's not necessarily something that we feel is going to be a real strong place to get candidates, um, just because it's not a learning district. Um, you sort of have to hit the ground with your feet running. Another thing is Mary has in the office, right, yeah. a copy of this that the MSMA gave us. So if anybody wants to look at it, she can make a copy. That's where all these sort of form sheets are and all that but stuff. But it just gives you their view of how you do it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, where do I get a copy of that? I'd love to in have a copy of that. Come to the superintendent's office, I'll give okay, you a copy. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have one as a comment and two questions. One of the things that I got from the MSPA. MA. MSMA. MSMA. Main, Main, Main School, School Management, Management Association. Association. MSMA meeting was one, the average superintendent stay. That's an average for people that are in their inner city schools that stay for two months. I mean, he did say this. And then people that, you know, are superintendents on Long Island and they stay for, you know, two weeks. So it, I got the impression that the, the average was of, you know, sort of taking out the extremes was a little bit longer than that, but that was something that I certainly heard him, him say. Yeah, I, I don't really remember him saying that. He did sort of say something, you know, Long Island or some island couldn't get anybody. You know, those have been vacant forever. Right, and then, but he also said, so, I mean, I guess when I walked away from the meeting, I thought, okay, it isn't, you know, it isn't a year or 18 months. I mean, the average is a little bit, a little bit longer than that when you get to the extreme. And the other, the question that I had was how much, um, when we left the meeting the last time, at least when I left, and, and we went into executive session, I wondered um, how much involvement you've decided to have the MSMA. Yeah, very, pretty minimal. Um, they are a service that we could hire at this point to do the search. You know, obviously not all the interviewing things, but basically run the search, and we've decided not to do that. We've um, gotten from them all of their mailing labels for the um, superintendents and assistant superintendents in Maine, and we've asked them to post our ad everywhere they possibly can, and those are the only pieces we've asked them to do. We feel pretty comfortable that we can do the rest of the process herself. Mary is wonderful. She will keep all of the stuff in order for us in the central office. She'll devote a little drawer and with all the applicants and keep track of them and everything. So um, that's sort of where we came to with that one. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I just thought it was it would be yeah. interesting for people to know that MSMA will do everything from just sort of yeah. actually doing a, a consultation like they do yeah. at night all the way up to doing the whole search. Yeah. Yeah. And so, You've yeah, we, we've sort of, we'll probably pay them, you know, maybe less than a hundred dollars for everything they will do for us. So. Well, we're, we're fortunate on this board to have um, uh, members who volunteer. Inevitably, Beth will be involved on a full-time basis. I mean, it, it will become a full-time job to keep this all moving and coordinated, and we're fortunate to have um, someone who stepped to the plate and who can provide that amount of time and attention. And I think other other districts that may not have those resources may need to depend on um, a search that is um, that's run a little bit more externally. And I, I think that the, the the best searches coming from 
the business side of, of the world are ones that, that you have your finger on the pulse of it every step of the way. I and think that's what we're trying to do. If we had an adversarial relationship with an existing superintendent, it would be a separate issue too. If you needed somehow to distance yourself from that office for whatever reason, I can see that would be a, a reason to move it out also. Obviously, we don't have that. Well, that, and that, that was another thing I was interested in in the meeting. He had said that some people invite the superintendents to be part of the search process, and some people don't. And what have you decided to do? Um, Cynthia, you know, has chosen not to be here tonight for this part, and she chose not to for the teacher one, just so people could speak more freely. She is certainly supporting this process the entire way. Um, I think she did not want to sit in on the first interviews, but if we wanted her for the second interviews when the questions were much more specific about how to run the district or what it's like running the district, she would be happy to do that for us. Um, and just one more yeah. question, I know I'm sort of, the other question is, I was just curious as to which one of the board members were on the superintendent, were all of you on the superintendent, oh, I know that Jonathan, you were not, but were all of you on the superintendent search last week? Who, no. who was? I was. Three. Oh, okay. Actually, no. I was a community rep. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, it's easy to make mistakes, too. You know, you, it's hard dealing with the press or if the press wants to get in and figure out. We want to keep um, candidates confidential as long as we can so that we encourage people who are successful candidates in Maine to apply and know that will be kept secret from their district so that if they decide they're not interested or we're not interested in them they can go back and work very happily where they're working now and that's very important. Um, obviously at some point their names do come out as you get further down the process and they have to be aware of that but um, we're happy not to check references until we have let them know we're going to do that so they have a way of saying I'm going to remove myself now from the search don't do that or I'm in you know those kind of things so yeah when you have all the resumes in front of you what would be the process or criteria for who we want to pursue further that's that's uh, who will be involved in that. Setting the criteria and all are what we're going to we're going to hopefully move on to right now since I've wasted so much time on the process. But we are going to generate from we'll move right into that as you say this. The second sheet you got tonight is again from MSMA, but I think it's actually what we developed in our last search. All of these. Um, attributes are things that every superintendent needs. There's not one here that we feel like you can say a person needs no experience in them. But we have to have a way, as we're looking at candidates, as you say, of saying what are the most important things to us. So we're asking teachers and we're asking community to give us a sense as you look at these and anything else you want to tell us. Mary's going to take good notes to say what is most important for this district at this moment, because it obviously changes over time. Facilities management, just as an example, was something that was quite important to us a number of years ago when we had buildings that were falling down and no um, facilities manager position. Now that's something that has a little bit, we care about it very much, and we budget for it and take care of it. But it's not something a superintendent needs to be as focused on as they did when Connie Goldman was here and really pushing the building project through. So that's one that w we might say is not quite on the front burner in Cape Elizabeth right now. So we will take your input, input from the teachers and administrators, and we will sit down on December eighth in an executive session to really generate the list of what is going to be most important to us so that as we all go through the applications the first part of January we're all sort of got in mind the same things we're looking for again it's not to say any of these are things that the person doesn't need to have it's just to get a sense of what are, where the district is now and what we should really be focusing on does that answer your question yeah the other second part of that was who will be involved in that that process of saying this resume goes over here this resume will be superb the board does that piece um, after December 31st when all the applications are complete the school board will sit down with all 50 of them we hope I don't know <laughs> hopeful and narrow that to eight to twelve candidates so we will do that piece and from doing it in the past you know you know 
after five minutes with some of them, you sort of have the definitely no's, definitely yes, and then a big stack in the middle that you're trying to sort of push around. Yeah, let's talk to them, let's not, you know, those kind of things. Um, but it will be the board doing that piece. So. It would be important now, we, we, uh, the, the purpose of the meeting is to certainly understand the process, but it's also more of an opportunity for the board to listen to public input. And uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, is to off, offer the opportunity for that input now. If you uh, could wait to be recognized, uh, perhaps also if you could identify yourself, yeah, that would be Mary, helpful would be to helpful. us. So if you don't mind, yeah, Debbie, you can go first, but if you don't mind going a little bit from the list because it makes it a little easier when we're trying to think of categories and, you know, those things, but you can say anything. Sorry, I, I probably don't follow your list. That, oh, that's, that's okay. okay. Go that's, ahead. Another that's fine. Um, yeah. My name is Deborah Riley, and uh, I'm sort of on the way out. I've had students in the school system for 17 years, but this is my yeah. last, so um, I do have a few... Um, comments to make, um, and they're probably some of them general, but a few are specific. Obviously, I want someone who can move the system forward. Um, first of all, I want someone who has compassion for kids, um, who knows uh, ch how children and has had experience at uh, proven um, time interacting with students. I'd like to, I guess, um, I'd like to see someone who has uh, proven his ability or her ability to hold the administration responsible for what goes on in his or her own school, um, someone who makes the system follow the chain of command, who seeks advice from staff and shows support for excellence in teachers and administration. I'd like to see someone who, um, who uh, has proven a long-term increase in SAT scores and can tell how or what uh, he or she has made this happen. Um, someone who's shown innovation in staff development and has been able to secure more money for their district and how they did it. Someone who's dem demonstrated a willingness to pr uh, promptly address parental concerns. Someone who's not intimidated by the school board and can disagree respectfully and be persuasive when sensitive political issues arise. I'd also like to see someone who's demonstrated frequent visits to the schools and has a really um, close relationship with students as well as teachers. And I think it also would be really helpful to have someone who has experience outside of the educational arena. Um, I think that's a valuable um, skill in working with the school district. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Debbie. Is there other comments? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> that's okay. It's on tape. Useful and relevant uh, to get a type copy of that. I, that was inspiring. If, okay. if you want to I'd give like it to me, I'll be happy to type it. Anyway. I'll type it. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I did this really in a hurry. I didn't. Uh, Jen was the one who reminded me of this meeting, and so I was sort of busy for the last 24 hours, sort of writing things down. Other people want to? I mean, speak informally. It's not. But you know. if I could, yeah. I, I I know nobody wanted to talk further about process, but I, I kind of did. I was taking some notes. I think you guys have gone through a great process. I'm comforted as a new member, a returning member of the community, that we do have a lot of quality people involved, obviously, a lot of people who care, and I, I'm thrilled. I'm glad I came tonight just to kind of see that, and you know, a bunch of obviously bright and articulate people thinking all this stuff through. If I could, I... Um, could you I, identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jim Thanks. Barrett, and um, I'm a parent of four young children that I hope will all matriculate very successfully through a school I went K through 12 in and um, didn't extract the best education that the school had to offer them. We had an open campus and smoking area and uh, people were partying pretty hard on the way to school, never mind on the way home. So uh, you know, it was a different time, a different place, but uh, the pendulum swings and, and uh, I think maybe to the extent that that open campus feeling let a lot of kids down, I think it did let a lot of kids down. You know, sort of an attitude and philosophy that struck me at the time, even at the time, let alone looking back on it, of, well, these are, these are almost adults, let them make their own decisions. I think that's foolishness with 15 and 16 year olds figuring out how to conduct themselves in some pretty critical formative years. But having gone through that little quick, so several things were said tonight. I'd like to, if I could, just kind of throw sure. comments out to the wind for you to consider. My background is a fairly successful business career. Um, and I, you know, I, I feel like I'm proud of me. I'm, my parents are proud of me. I don't have anything to prove to anybody. If it was unclear from some of the comments um, made tonight, uh, 
what I would like to do as a community member and, and being involved, I'd like to just clarify, I was not seeking this position and I'm not seeking compensation in any capacity that I might uh, be involved in this search process. I, I'd like to think, I, I heard you guys talking, there's, there's three people that have submitted letters. Um, I would just like to throw out, and you'll see when I get to site visits in just a minute why I think this is relevant. If there's three of us that care enough to come tonight and write a letter and try to articulate what their concerns are, I'd like to think that, that we could have three people um, be part of the process, even if I'm just sort of like in an audit capacity off in the back of the room. I, I promise to be quiet if I offend anybody in a, a, in a group setting like that, where it's, it's really, this, ultimately, I believe it's absolutely the school board's responsibility for what we're going through. Um, but you've got a heavy responsibility to hear people who care enough to come, too, and I, I, I'm just thrilled to see that dialogue. If I could, I, just five or six real quick comments. The site visits, I didn't really understand uh, why we would take an entourage somewhere else if only to visit their program, but in t I, yeah. if I could just kind yeah, of whiz ahead. through these and, and then anything you wanted to yeah. respond to would be great. I, I don't want to take up no. too much time, but it seems to me that a candidate who wants a different lifestyle, I mean, I, I lived in Los Angeles 21 years. I wanted to come back here because I know how incredibly great a place this is to live and, and raise kids. Uh, I wanted to come back here for community, and maybe somebody can give up something on, on salary to be here, but maybe we shouldn't philosophically have this defeatist, it strikes me almost, attitude of, well, you know, it's pretty darn good salary for Maine. And it, it seems to me when we start saying let's target all Maine things, we don't want to hurt anybody's Maine sensibilities, um, let's start by making sure that everybody's input from Maine is welcome. I, I'm not saying that the best candidate isn't in Maine. In fact, he or she may be. But it seems very limiting to me to say, gee, it would be great if we could get somebody from Maine. I, I don't understand that as a criteria. It seems the best candidate, and frankly, whatever we have to pay them on a national scale basis, if, if compensation is an objection for having the best teachers and compensation is an objection for having the best qualified candidate in a critical leadership role for the school, I think we're being stupid for about $25,000, it sounds like to me. Um, you know, you, you take some of the top performing companies in Greater Portland, Unum, for example, which is a national you know, compensation-based insurer, People's Heritage, which is doing neat little numbers in its little community and niche that it's found. Uh, these companies look at their annual reports. They are doing national surveys. What are what are top flight banking executives making around the country? What are top flight insurance executives making around the country? They're not saying what are the down home, down east, you know, Greater Portland, Kittery. What what are guys happy to make here that aren't you know working 90 hour weeks as a as a commitment to their careers? I, I think that that's a mistake philosophically, and I, I just throw that out almost to the wind. I, and I, as I was listening, I, that's three or four of my points here, but I think we need to be overcoming objections. If somebody in Connecticut has an enormously successful program where all the teachers and administrators think that, oh, man, this lady just walks on water, this guy just walks on water, damn it, I think we should be trying to recruit somebody like that for Cape. We've got one of the most affluent communities in the country. Uh, certainly on, in this region we do, and, and shame on us if we can't. If we can't overcome salary as an objection for getting the best player. Um, I, I wonder, listening to the process, too, of recruiting, if there isn't uh, somebody who specializes in recruiting. I can tell you, when in business development and career, which is what, what my background was, if we needed the chief lending officer, if we wanted the chief asset uh, management director, we thought about and networked who is that best guy? I mean, we don't need Boston Globe, we don't need the LA Times, New York Times. Is there a target that we want? Instead of taking this, you know, sort of hand grenade approach to all points bulletin, are there four or five people that we can, you know, take a 30-odd six rifle approach to trying to locate? And, and tell them off the bat, we, we can overcome salary objection. You've got a couple of key sergeants you want to bring with you. We're thrilled to have that. And, and I don't mean just somebody who's popular and somebody who's politically good, uh, with with our board or our administration here, somebody who's got an enormously uh, and objectively demonstrable successful background in taking a school system from wherever it was and taking it to entirely new levels. Mm -hmm. So those are, uh, I, I think, just kind of looking at some of my um, summaries here. I, I, the retirement issue, to the extent that we lost a prime candidate who wanted to move here in his, you know, his mid-50s or mid-40s, a young guy who wanted to make a career and like the community, but geez, I can't give up my pension. You know, pension issues get, 
get amortized over a guy's time from where he is in his career till his normal retirement day. Mm -hmm. uh, we got 20 years to make up for vesting. And on a discounted basis, these are peanut dollars we're talking about. Um, anyway, I've, I've said an awful lot. Somebody once told me, Jim, opinions are kind of like behinds. Everybody's got one, and some are just a lot bigger than others. But <laughs> they're, they're if I offended anybody, yeah. I, forgive me for that, but I care an awful lot. I want this school system uh, it's a venerable school system. I'm, I got a lot out of this program without even trying, and uh, damn it, I want it to be the best in the state, and I don't want to give up in a year or two and say, well, the hell with it. We'll just send our kids to private school. That's my answer. Yeah, there are a lot of issues. We've talked about all of them. You know, real quick, site visits are important because you get to see and talk to people that you're not put in touch with through the candidate. See what they're actually doing and talk to people there. Um, the salary issues sounds, we all say it all the time, it's not worth losing a good candidate for $10,000 or whatever, but there are political fallout from all of those kind of things. This is a political situation where a superintendent's salary is publicized for every person in Cape Elizabeth as part of the budget process. We're also, you know, responsible to the town council on how much we pay. Um, those are all issues we need to keep in mind, not to say, you know, what you're saying is that we've all thought about them all. Um, as for sort of headhunters for superintendents, I guess there's one service that does it, but they don't come up with any different candidates than what we get. And it isn't like the business world where you can know who's the best one in the country. I mean, there's city districts all over who are searching for a <coughs> answer to find that magic person who can come in and turn a school system around. It's sort of an individual beast that not only have to run a multi-million dollar business, but you have to deal with unions and teachers and education philosophy and those kind of things. So anyway, they're all things we've thought about and happy to talk some more about them, but I guess I feel like we should probably use the time to get back to other people who want to jump up and say something. Yeah. Um, I'm Eric Rechersmith, I'm a senior at the high school. And, uh, I just had a question regarding if, if students would be given an opportunity to uh, be um, to interview candidates and if they would be uh, offered time to ask their own questions. I think we did it last time when they came to the high school, the finalists, and that we had a time that kids met with the um, candidates. I was actually there for at least one of them in the um, teachers' lounge, and I. And, you know, I'm assuming that that would be part of the site visit to the high school this time also. So my gut feeling is yes. Probably more at the high school than at the other schools, though. Yeah. There was an, another comment. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Elaine Maloney. Um, I just wanted to make a comment that um, as much as the candidates that become interviewed by the teachers and the administrators and the community members and the school board, are going to be selling themselves to you guys. I would just like to remind you that you also have responsibility to sell our school system and its potential, the students and the community, to these people. And I really think a very positive outlook uh, is very important uh, as far as conveying the feeling that they want to be here. And that if they can't get the salary or they can't get the pension, that just being here is a selling point. Uh, for them. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And I think every candidate who walked away from us the last time said, oh, it just really looked like a wonderful place. I mean, I really had that feeling. Um, but it just didn't, the family didn't want to move when push came to shove or, you know, those things. Are there other comments, other input? Patty? Uh, I'm Patsy, Patsy. and I just have a couple of points I'd like to emphasize. Uh, one is that I think that communication skills are essential, uh, particularly uh, when addressing parent and teacher concerns. I think it has to be done promptly and in good faith. That's very important to me. And also, um, this kind of relates to personnel management and school improvement. I'd like to see a superintendent who is committed to creating a work environment and a climate that supports, values, and encourages our teachers. Because I think that ultimately benefits our students. Tina, do you want to? 
Yeah, my name is Tina Hearn, and I agree with a lot of what's been said this evening. I just wanted to ask um, whether or not we have a job description for the superintendent. I'd really, really like to know what the roles are specifically of this job and what um, what they're expected to do before we can go out and search for who we need to fill those that position. So is there, is there a job description? Is there a... I don't know if we have an officially a job description on record. A superintendent in each district all over Maine is a little bit different. Um, we certainly need for Cape Elizabeth to articulate exactly what they need to do here and um, what our expectation is. I can tell you from the time before when we did this, the biggest piece that we're different from other districts is the curriculum piece. That our superintendent is ultimately the one who is responsible for curriculum and along with the school board, but they are certainly the one implementing it. Many other districts have a curriculum coordinator or which is an administrative position or an assistant superintendent that may take on some of those roles. In Cape Elizabeth, you are basically running the business and it might be, you know, parent concerns, budget overruns, teacher issues, it's it's the gamut. But we do need to get it all down um, and do that. And I think as we do the um, the attributes we are looking for, um, it certainly doesn't become a job description, but we need to, to focus on that, too. Yeah, I would hope that there would be a solid job description. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it occurs to me as you're saying that, Beth, that if, on the one hand, um, we're concerned that maybe our, in the 80s, um, salary um, offer is not going to get the best you know, applicants for this job. And on the other hand, because we don't have a curriculum <coughs> coordinator, we would expect the superintendent to do that job. Um, if you can't raise the salary um, in any significant way for the superintendent, then maybe we need to uh, spend the money on a curriculum coordinator so that the superintendent can pay attention to this other very long list of things that are really important, you know, visiting schools and working with the community. And, Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, right now we're trying for this year that sort of the administrators are all responsible for one curriculum area to sort of do that piece. But yeah, it may be something we need to look at. We've certainly tossed around the curriculum coordinator for five years, do we think? At least five years. It's a it's you know, it's a big piece of money to fund. So. The, other, the other thing is, and we certainly don't want to leave you with the impression that we're feeling downtrodden and feeling like this is not going to be a successful search. We have every reason to believe that this will be a very successful search, that we have the resources, um, as someone in the audience pointed out, um, there's great selling features to this in terms of the, the student population, the involvement of parents, uh, the resources within the school, the reputation, etc. We have every reason to believe that we will be very successful and don't feel like we are going into this um, in, in any way kind of hanging our heads low. Unfortunately, there's just been a, a bit of more recent history that has proven to be um, difficult, where things can take a quick turn. Um, we were we were all set and ready to go um, uh, with the search that I was involved with, which was the last one, and um, and things just take a little bit of a turn sometimes, and and we're just hoping that that's not going to be the case. We have every reason to believe we are going to get a number of candidates, and that they will be very skilled and very competent and very qualified folks, and that we will have. Uh, some people to to really take a good look at and and to choose from. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just. I was just trying. I just. I wanted to because there was a little. I got a little yeah. bit of a sense from some of the comments. Yeah. We will, but it also just want to make sure that, to me that maybe the reason why this is a nationwide problem is because, like, we're asking our teachers and administrators mm -hmm. to do more and more and mm -hmm. more without ever taking anything away. Mm -hmm. That was happening 25 years ago when I was in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think that's changed. I think that's gotten worse. And maybe the part of the issue is that there are just so very few people can, can really do all this and do it well. There's an interesting article in the uh, Portland a Sunday paper a while ago about principles and how hard it is to find them. It's very same reasons, uh -huh. same things. But anyway, we're not going in pessimistic. I just am trying to be realistic. Yeah. Um, Trish Brigham, a couple comments. Um, first, to go back 
this list is overwhelming. I mean, God, I don't think it's going to do this. But um, it's a it's a wish list. It, exactly. <laughs> um, it, interesting. I'm curious to know too if we will get wonderful candidates. Um, but if at, at some point is there going to be? I hate to say a scorecard where you're actually going to rate these by priority. Uh, but in, I think probably just sort of listening to some of the issues. I think the personnel management and staff development, um, the teachers in the classroom, it, it's all the issue. We're asking them to do a lot more, and they are truly pivotal. They're the ones that are providing the education. Um, I think that's really important. I think also, um, is, I hate to say it, but the school finance and budget, anyone who can be creative, um, it, it's not, the problem's probably not going to get better. So to address those points, but I guess I had a question too, kind of co following up on some of the other comments. If you get a great candidate, which we will, um, and they do have some interesting ideas, maybe it's not necessarily to fund a curriculum coordinator, but some creative ideas on how to use, better use resources. Is there any flexibility in terms of negotiating or working with that person to do that or respond to some of their? Yeah, usually what we found from talking to many of these people, they may have some great ideas that have worked in other places, but they'll usually take a year or at least six months to get a sense of what Cape Elizabeth is. So you're right. The budget we put together this fiscal season, they will walk into, and that will be their budget for the year. I can't imagine any school board. I mean, one, I don't think they, coming in July 1st, they would immediately say, "We're throw, I'm throwing out this and this before they've even lived the place. And then I'm sure that the school board would be willing to work with them as the year went on if they wanted to move some funds around to change some things. Um, the thing you get into, honestly, with this kind of process is as we do the budget this year, we may say, let's not throw in some huge new idea of ours, let's wait a year because let's see how that new person would go for that. And that's not to say we're not going to be responsible. You know what I mean? I'm just, those kind of things do happen. Um, so I, I think there's, the board has always been flexible in and working. Just sort of also in negotiating. I mean, if you don't yeah. have money, but you know, sort of you can creatively take off some of the responsibilities so that they can address other issues that they feel are important, yeah. they can make an impact. I think we're I think we're I think we're pretty willing to not be rigid in any way to be open minded to be flexible uh, we had somebody turn us down and I asked permission from the chair of the search committee to be able to call that person back I mean I was calling them from my car phone in Colorado trying to get them to you know come up, well, I said come up for the weekend you know bring your wife with you um, the kind of things that we would do in business when we find somebody who's good you you need to you need to have that kind of flexibility and and so I think that it's it's the the process is very structured, but I don't think that there's a lot of rigidness in terms of getting to negotiation again within reason around salary or other other accommodations that might be able to be made. If again, we're going to go out there and find the absolute best candidate that we can. We're going to do everything that we can do to to bring that candidate here. The other pieces, we have wonderful support people holding up a lot of pieces. All of our administrators are doing a lot of all of this. We have a wonderful business manager who has our books in great shape. The school facility management piece, Ernie is doing a great job with that. So Weatherby picks up a lot of these pieces. I mean, we have wonderful people supporting these. So even though this looks overwhelming, we really have a great structure underneath it. Um, for anyone to walk into. Good selling point. Yes. Yeah. Well, back to the selling point, I was going to say if anybody wants to um, hit the website and if they see anything that they think should be in there that's not in there in an effort to sell the town or the school system or whatever. Cape Elizabeth know. website. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, and good. maybe we can stick that in too. So. Yeah. Because a number of people will look at that. To check us out. Other things? People, yeah. You know, I am, I'm Kathy Perkins, and I'm sitting here looking at this, and obviously a lot of these things are important to first page, you know, as a given. Um, I think uh, having an active um, interest in the school and the students is really important. I think that, I think it's great that they would be an educator, that they've been there 
um, and they actually would go you know, visit the schools on a regular basis and become part of the community. I think that that would be a really nice thing. I have a question. I'm sitting here um, looking at, like I said, you know, it's hard to sort of put it all in order, you know, as what's the most important. The superintendent board relation. Um, I have some questions about that um, in that maybe I'm just misreading this, but it, you know, it's understanding that the superintendent is responsible for the management of the school under the board's policy and accountable to the board. I just would hope um, that the board would be open to somebody coming in um, ideas and would be open and creative. That because this just sounds sort of like yeah. you report to the board and I think what we're looking for there is just someone who is open and honest with the boards they've had in the past. They don't have to agree with the board, and the board doesn't have to agree with them. The way this board works, we don't all agree with each other. So, but the the commonality is we all listen to each other and hear the different yes. sides and go on. You know. As far as I've, we've never had an adversarial relationship yeah, with oh, our superintendent or anything, really and we've never had anything but a great working relationship. So, I can't imagine this board. I mean, it's not a high priority of this board to find somebody who just is always good to their board. I mean, we want somebody who's a good educator and good leader and brings this district from where we are further down the line. I think, Kathy, even in the, the period of time that you've been involved, I think that you've seen the the board and the strategy of the board be more in terms of standing back and, and talking about outcomes rather than specific do this, do that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I think that I think we've really, um, as a board, uh, you know, and the board changes all the time, so you talk about a board, but really, it, you know, next year it will be different and so on. But um, I, I think that that we have provided um, a, a lot of um, a lot of autonomy um, and step back from doing anything that might be construed as as day-to-day uh, -day or sort of micro micromanagement. Um, hoping that the educational leader is going to you know is going to fill the role of, of just that. The, the board is not the uh, you know so we're certainly collectively not the expert in terms of of education and, and leadership in education. We depend on that superintendent to take the, that leadership role. And they need to do that by not being hovered over, but by being supported and encouraged. And I think that, um, I mean, my sense is that that's the direction that this board has moved. I don't want to shortchange Gary yeah, too much on his time. Our superintendent right now is telling us that the time is is moving. But are um, there other things people are pressing? Please feel free to jot notes down, <coughs> give them to Mary or can, to me. Can yeah. I ask just one last question, uh, George, about the um, the teacher input? Mm -hmm. uh, I, are we sure we're getting input? I, I mean, I've received just, just kind of doing a Japanese wander around, um, almost unsolicited input from teachers on different issues that they see in the school. And I have, it, this may just be the new guy who doesn't really know anybody, but to the extent we think things are going well at the board level, they're perhaps not going well at the troop level, which I would here call the teachers. Uh, and how are we sure that we're getting really quality input from the teachers into this search process? I mean, if they feel like, like you, Maybe it's the baggage from the past, but the board is too micromanagement. The, um, there's a, kind of a leadership vacuum, and geez, at the same time, I don't have enough autonom autonomy and, a, and enough uh, say-so over what's going on in my classrooms. How are we making sure that that, that ground up instead of top-down aspect of this search is going to get melded in here? Well, they had an opportunity to come. We had a... Um November 9th. We certainly didn't get a good turnout of teachers. Um, last time we sent them a piece of paper to fill out with their input and again we didn't have a great response level. Certainly better than we had when we held a meeting. Um, we need to look at that again. Um, we've also asked for two teachers to be on the screening committee. Can, um, can I yeah. make a suggestion? Beth? That, that, yeah. Thank you. That's all responsive and helpful. I, I would be willing to try to you know, take people out to lunch and, and sort of on a very informal basis try to solicit, you know, sort of ground level uh, reconnaissance almost in, into this process or anything else that it may be useful. Yeah. Uh, you know, corporate planning director, a bunch of different things that I've done. Um, you know, oftentimes you, when, you, when you're sitting in an executive office, which 
from a metaphorical standpoint, that's what we're doing here, uh, you don't really know what the teachers are thinking about. And what you wind up with is a couple of outspoken or outgoing ones that really care, articulating their views at length and perhaps not capturing the essence of, of sort of maybe, as I've spoken about it tonight, the objections, compensation levels or whatever the objections I think we've, be. I think we've, um, Again, I, I hear what, I hear the point that you're making, and, and I think it's a valid one. We um, we I think we respect the the staff as being professional, um, and in terms of um, in terms of the, them being professionals, um, have provided opportunities for them to step forward and provide input, um, as well reminded uh, the staff that if they were unable to attend the meeting, that they can continue to provide input in writing. Um, staff uh, doesn't hesitate generally to contact individual board members um, and or to uh, provide input to the teacher representative um, or to their building principal in terms of um, being, again, being represented. I, I don't know that, uh, I certainly know that I, as a board member I would not encourage sort of this um, reconnaissance uh, situation that you that you recommended. Um, we would we would expect that the staff would um, uh, take advantage of the opportunities that are being presented, um, and certainly at the very least through their building principal or assistant principal, be able to have that kind of input, and and um, wouldn't really have any reason to believe that that wouldn't come forward. Any other? input we need otherwise I think we should probably turn it over to Gary um, anybody else please feel free again to put your thoughts in writing get them over to the superintendent's office um, the superintendent search committee Mary is sort of our um, administrative helper over there with all of this stuff um, so anyway thank you thank everybody for coming really appreciate it